Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm here from Hogwarts or something to bring you the next installment of Solve the, the Free Response Problem. Today I've gone back to circuits because we never really got to wrap up this unit and, and to review it. Um, and so I thought it'd be good to go through a question from last year's APC EM exam that had to do with circuits. Um, so the first thing, we have this nice circuit with these two batteries, and we're asked to use Kirchhoff's rules to write but not solve equations that can be used to solve for the current in each resistor. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Remember Kirchhoff's rules, there's the junction rule that says all the current flowing into the junction equals the current flowing out of the junction. So that's easy enough to give me the first equation that I could use. I'm gonna need a system of equations here because I've got three unknowns, which are these three currents. But I can see I1 and I3 flow into that junction and I2 flows out. So those things must be equal to each other. But then now I'm gonna to need to use the loop rule. Um, and so let's say I start at this point. So the loop rule again states that if you make one closed loop path, you will end up with, um, with zero volt um, potential difference, right? So I could say um, six volts minus 150 I1, right? Because the voltage drop is gonna equal current times resistance. And then I'm using this path right here, minus 200 ohms times I2, and that should give me zero. I'm gonna do the same thing with this loop over here. All right, I'm gonna start in this corner. I go through the battery, that's up six volts. I'm gonna go down through the um, this resistor, so that's minus 100 times um, I3, and then I'm gonna go through this resistor to get home, and so that's minus 200 I2, and that's equal to zero. So I've done what they asked. I've wrote these, I've written these three equations, which just have three unknowns. So this is a system of equations that I could use to solve, um, to solve later. And actually, that's what they want me to do. Um, they want me to find what I2 is. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, so there's multiple ways of solving systems of equations. I don't have a graphing calculator to make a matrix right now, so I'm gonna have to do some, some old school algebra here. And um, let me see, I'll have to make some substitutions. I can put both I1 and I2 I'm sorry, I1 and I3 in terms of, of I2. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I could say um, 100 I3, if I add that to both sides, equals six minus 200 I2, okay? And so then I can just divide by 100 and get 0 0.06 equals negative two, I'm sorry, minus I2 equals I3, okay? I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna substitute that value for I3 here. I'm gonna do the same thing with, with this equation. And so when I bring that down here, I'll have um, six volts minus 200 I2 equals 150 I1. And then I'll divide both of these by 150. Um, so 600 divided by 150, that's, that's something. <laughs> um, I think that's 125th, right? So that'd be 0 0.04 minus 200 over 150. Well, that's, what is that, four thirds? No, what is that? Yeah, that is four thirds I2, and that would equal I1, okay? So now I have expressions for both I3 and I1 that I can substitute into this equation over here. This is a lot of algebra, but it's just algebra. That's the, that's the good news. So I have 0 0.04 minus 4 thirds 
I2 and 0 0.06 minus 2 I2. Okay, and so now I'll combine my like terms here. Um, so what is this? 10 thirds. Oh, let me just rewrite it. I2, I'll, I'll combine like terms here. I'll have 0 0.1 minus um, 10 thirds I2. I'll add 10 thirds to both sides. I'll have 13 thirds um, times I2, when I add that to both sides, equal to 0.1. And so then when I rearrange this, I'll have I2 equal to um, 0.1 times 3 thirteenths, which would equal 3 over 130 amps. And normally I would have brought a calculator and I would figure out um, how much current that is um, and convert that to a decimal. Okay, um, moving on to the next part. Calculated the power dissipated by that 200 ohm resistor. Okay, um, so for part three, so this was part two, not part pi, part two. There we go, part three. We know that power is just current times voltage. Now I can figure out what the voltage is, but I also know that voltage is current times resistance, so this could be I squared times R, okay? And so I know the current that's going through that resistor, I know its resistance, I would just plug those in and, um, and solve. Um, I trust you guys can operate a calculator and do that on your own. So now the, the problem goes on and it says, well, I've, I've replaced those two six volt batteries with some uh, ideal battery with some voltage uh, E and um, a resistor over here. And they're telling me what the voltage is across this 200 ohm resistor. And now I wanna know the, the current through the 50 ohm resistor, okay? So if I know that there's 4.4 volts from here to here, all right, that's that's what the voltmeter is reading, 4.4 volts. This is a simple Ohm's law calculation. Okay, current does equal voltage divided by resistance. Now along this branch, the 100 ohm resistor and the 50 ohm resistor are in series. And remember when you um, have series resistors, all you have to do is add up those resistances to find the equivalent resistance and so we've got 150 ohms of resistance along this branch, and we've got 4.4 volts across it. I know they only told that was the voltage across this resistor, but look, that resistor is in parallel with this branch. So that's also the voltage across that branch. Okay, and you would get some number there. Again, I don't have my calculator, but that would be how you would find the uh, current through that 50 ohm resistor. And now if I want to know the voltage um, of the battery, um, let's see, what would I do there? I don't, I don't even know what I would do there. Um, so I'd have to, <laughs> I would have to figure out, um, oh, that would be easy enough, okay. Because once I know the current that's going here, which I just calculated, okay, um, so whatever this current is here, I could then add, I would also then, well, that's not going that way. Sorry, that, that voltage is, I'm sorry, that current is going this way. <laughs> well, as we discussed before, Kirchhoff's rules would say that the current that's going through um, this resistor is equal to the current that's going down across this resistor over here and the current going across here. So I could find the current going through um, the two ohm, 200 ohm resistor. You know what, I'm gonna call that one I2. And I'm gonna call this one I1 that I just figured out. And I know that my current, and I'm gonna call this one I3 then, my current that's going through the battery and through this whole branch over here is equal to um, 
I1 plus I2. And I already know that I1 is 4.4 volts over 150 ohms. And the current going through um, this 200 ohm resistor is going to also be 4.4 volts, but this time divided by 200 ohms. Okay, And that's going to be the current that's going through this uh, resistor. And you're probably asking yourself, Mr. Kuda, what the heck are you doing? Why are you finding the current? It didn't ask you for that. It asked you for the voltage across this, uh, this battery. Well, the thing is, I can only find that using Kirchhoff's loop rule. Um, and Kirchhoff's loop rule would say that the EMF gained through that battery minus I3 times um, 150 ohms. Okay, the voltage gain minus the voltage drop. You know what? I have to make a complete circle, so I also have to drop this 4.4 volts. And that will have to equal zero. Right, the voltage gain minus the voltage loss will be zero for any closed loop path. And here's where I'll uh, calculate I3, and I'll just substitute and solve. Okay, moving on. So now in part D, we've replaced um, the 200 ohm resistor with a 200 microfarad capacitor. And um, we allow it to reach steady state. And we want to know the current through the five, uh, 50 ohm resistor. That's easy enough because once it's at steady state, this looks just like what like this diagram shows, right? The capacitor becomes an open part of the circuit, or or at least it, it can you can consider it an open part of the circuit, so that all we have are three resistors that are in series. So the current through that resistor will be um, <clears throat> equal to the current through the battery, right? There's just one current flowing all the way around this. And so it will be the EMF of the battery divided by the total resistance of the circuit, which is 150 ohms plus 100 ohms plus 50 ohms, okay? That's really common where they'll ask you specifically about the current through some resistor, but you have to use the concept and realize that that current, since this is all in series, um, that current is the same everywhere. And so, yeah, if we know the current through the battery, we're going to know the current through that 50 ohm resistor. Okay. Now, last but not least, you guys, you know what? They change things around for the coronavirus. Um, this is the symbol for an inductor. You don't have to know that for, for this exam, but I'm going to let you know anyway. Unlike a uh, capacitor at steady state, an inductor at steady state is going to act like a short circuit. It's going to act like this is just a piece of wire. And so if I put a piece of wire um, from here to here, that means there's going to be no voltage drop from here to here once it's reached steady state. And so it's going to short circuit this, and you'll only have current flowing right in here. There will be no current flowing through that 50 ohm resistor. So, of course, um, the current through the 50 ohm resistor is now less than what we calculated um, prior, okay, because there is no current. Okay, guys, I hope that was helpful, uh, and I hope to see you guys real soon. I don't know who that is, but he, he hopes to see you soon, too.